Canto 1, The Symbol Dawn. It was the hour before the gods awake. Across the path of the divine event, the huge foreboding mind of night alone in her unlit temple of eternity lay stretched immobile upon silence marge. Almost one felt opaque, impenetrable in the somber symbol of her eyeless muse, the abysm of the unbodied infinite. A fathomless zero occupied the world. A power of fallen, boundless self awake between the first and the last nothingness, recalling the tenebrous womb from which it came, turn from the insoluble mystery of birth and the tardy process of mortality and longed to reach its end in vacant naught. As in a dark beginning of all things, a mute, featureless semblance of the unknown, repeating forever the unconscious act, prolonging forever the unseeing will, cradled the cosmic drowse of ignorant force whose moved creative slumber kindles the suns and carries our lives in its somnambulist world. Athwart the vain, enormous trance of space, its formless stupor without mind or life, a shadow spinning through a soulless void, thrown back once more into unthinking dreams, earth wheeled, abandoned in the hollow gulfs, forgetful of her spirit and her fate. The impassive skies were neutral, empty, still. Then something in the inscrutable darkness stirred, a nameless movement, an unthought idea, insistent, dissatisfied, without an aim, something that wished but knew not how to be, teased the inconscient to wake ignorance. A throw that came and left a quivering trace gave room for an old, tired want unfilled, at peace in its subconscious moonless cave to raise its head and look for absent light straining closed eyes of vanished memory, like one who searches for a bygone self and only meets the corpse of his desire. It was as though, even in this not profound, even in this ultimate dissolution's core, there lurked an unremembering entity survivor of a slain and buried past, condemned to resume the effort and the pang, reviving in another frustrate world. An unshaped consciousness desired light, and a blank prescience yearned towards distant change. As if a childlike finger laid on a cheek, reminded of the endless need in things, the heedless mother of the universe, an infant longing clutched the somber vast. Insensibly, somewhere, 
a breach began, a long, lone line of hesitating hue, like a vague smile tempting a desert heart, troubled the far rim of life's obscure sleep. Arrived from the other side of boundlessness, an eye of deity peered through the dumb deeps. A scout in a reconnaissance from the sun, it seemed amid a heavy cosmic rest, the torpor of a sick and weary world, to seek for a spirit soul and desolate, too fallen to recollect forgotten bliss. Intervening in a mindless universe, its message crept through the reluctant hush, calling the adventure of consciousness and joy, and conquering nature's disillusioned breast, compelled renewed consent to see and feel. A thought was sown in the unsounded void. A sense was born within the darkness depths. A memory quivered in the heart of time, as if a soul long dead were moved to live. But the oblivion that succeeds the fall had blotted the crowded tablets of the past and all that was destroyed must be rebuilt, an old experience labored out once more. All can be done if the God touch is there. A hope stole in that hardly dared to be amid the night's forlorn indifference, as if solicited in an alien world, with timid and hazardous instinctive grace, orphaned and driven out to seek a home, an errant marvel with no place to live, into a far-off nook of heaven there came a slow, miraculous gesture's dim appeal. The persistent thrill of a transfiguring touch persuaded the inert black quietude and beauty and wonder disturbed the fields of God. A wandering hand of pale enchanted light that glowed along a fading moment's brink, fixed with gold panel and opalescent hinge, a gate of dreams ajar on mystery's verge. One loosened corner, windowing hidden things, forced the world's blind immensity to sight. The darkness failed and slipped like a falling cloak from the reclining body of a god. Then through the pallid rift that seemed at first hardly enough for a trickle from the suns, outpoured the revelation and the flame. The brief perpetual sign recurred above, a glamour from unreached transcendences iridescent with the glory of the unseen, a message from the unknown immortal light, a blaze upon creation's quivering edge. Dawn built her aura of magnificent hues and buried its seed of grandeur in the hours. An instant's visitor the goddess shone. On life's thin border a while the vision stood and bent over earth's pondering forehead curve, interpreting a recondite beauty and bliss 
in colors, hieroglyphs of mystic sense. It wrote the lines of a significant myth, telling of a greatness of spiritual dawns, a brilliant code penned with the sky for page. Almost that day the epiphany was disclosed of which our thoughts and hopes are signal flares, a lonely splendor from the invisible goal almost was flung on the opaque inane. Once more a tread perturbed the vacant vasts, infinity's center, a face of rapturous calm parted the eternal lids that open heaven, a form from far beatitudes seemed to near. Ambassadress twixt eternity and change, the omniscient goddess leaned across the breaths that wrapped the fated journeyings of the stars and saw the spaces ready for her feet. Once she half looked behind for her veiled son, then thoughtful went to her immortal work. Earth felt the imperishable's passage close, the waking year of nature heard her steps and wideness turned to her its limitless eye and scattered on sealed depths her luminous smile kindled to fire the silence of the worlds. All grew a consecration and a rite. Air was a vibrant link between earth and heaven. The wide-winged hymn of a great priestly wind arose and failed upon the altar hills. The high boughs prayed in a revealing sky. Here where our half-lit ignorance skirts the gulfs on the dumb bosom of the ambiguous earth, here where one knows not even the step in front and truth has a throne on the shadowy back of doubt, on this anguished and precarious field of toil, outspread beneath some large indifferent gaze, impartial witness of our joy and bale, our prostrate soil bore the awakening ray. Here too the vision and prophetic gleam lit into miracles common meaningless shapes. Then the divine afflatus spent withdrew, unwanted, fading from the mortal's range. A sacred yearning lingered in its trace, the worship of a presence and a power too perfect to be held by death-bound hearts, the prescience of a marvelous birth to come. Only a little the God-light can stay, spiritual beauty illumining human sight lines with its passion and mystery matters musk and squanders eternity on a beat of time. As when a soul draws near the sill of birth adjoining mortal time to timelessness, a spark of deity lost in matter's script, its luster vanishes 
in the inconscient planes, that transitory glow of magic fire, so now dissolved in bright accustomed air. The message ceased and waned the messenger. The single call, the uncompanioned power, drew back into some far-off secret world the hue and marvel of the supernal beam. She looked no more on our mortality. The excess of beauty natural to God kind could not uphold its claim on time-born eyes. Too mystic real for space tenancy her body of glory was expunged from heaven. The rarity and wonder lived no more. There was the common light of earthly day, a franchise from the respite of fatigue. Once more the rumor of the speed of life pursued the cycles of a blinded quest. All sprang to their unvarying daily acts. The thousand peoples of the soil and tree obeyed the unforeseeing instant's urge, and leader here with his uncertain mind, alone who stares at the future's covered face, man lifted up the burden of his fate. And Savitri to awoke among these tribes that hastened to join the brilliant summoner's chant and lured by the beauty of the apparent ways acclaimed their portion of ephemeral joy. Akin to the eternity whence she came, no part she took in this small happiness, a mighty stranger in the human field, the embodied guest within made no response. The call that wakes the leap of human mind, its checkered eager motion of pursuit, its fluttering hued illusion of desire, visited her heart like a sweet alien note. Time's message of brief light was not for her. In her there was the anguish of the gods, imprisoned in a transient human mold, the deathless conquered by the death of things. A vaster nature's joy had once been hers, but long could keep not its gold heavenly hue or stand upon this brittle earthly base. A narrow movement on time's deep abysm, life's fragile littleness denied the power, the proud and conscious wideness and the bliss she had brought with her into the human form, the calm delight that weds one soul to all, the key to the flaming doors of ecstasy. Earth's grain that needs the sap of pleasure and tears rejected the undying rapture's boon, offered to the daughter of infinity her passion flower of love and doom she gave. In vain now seemed the splendid sacrifice, a prodigal of her rich divinity, herself and all she was she had lent to men hoping her greater being to implant and in their bodies' lives acclimatize 
that heaven might native grow on mortal soil. Hard is it to persuade earth nature's change. Mortality bears ill the eternal's touch. It fears the pure divine intolerance of that assault of ether and of fire. It murmurs at its sorrowless happiness, almost with hate repels the light it brings. It trembles at its naked power of truth and the might and sweetness of its absolute voice. Inflicting on the heights the abysm's law, it sullies with its mire heaven's messengers. Its thorns of fallen nature are the defense it turns against the Savior hands of grace. It meets the sons of God with death and pain. A glory of lightnings traversing the earth seen, their sun thoughts fading, darkened by ignorant minds, their work betrayed, their good to evil turned, the cross their payment for the crown they gave, only they leave behind a splendid name. A fire has come and touched men's hearts and gone. A few have caught flame and risen to greater life. Too unlike the world she came to help and save, her greatness weighed upon its ignorant breast and from its dim chasms welled a dire return, a portion of its sorrow, struggle, fall. To live with grief, to confront death on a road, the mortal's lot became the mortal share. Thus trapped in the gin of earthly destinies, awaiting her ordeals or abode, outcast from her inborn felicity, accepting life's obscure terrestrial robe, hiding herself even from those she loved, the Godhead greater by a human fate. A dark foreknowledge separated her from all of whom she was the star and stay. Too great to impart the peril and the pain, in her torn depths she kept the grief to come, as one who watching over men left blind takes up the load of an unwitting race, harboring a foe whom with her heart she must feed, unknown her act, unknown the doom she faced, unhelped she must foresee and dread and dare. The long foreknown and fatal morn was here, bringing a noon that seemed like every noon, for nature walks upon her mighty way, unheeding when she breaks a soul, a life. Leaving her slain behind, she travels on. Man only marks, and God's all-seeing eyes. Even in this moment of her soul's despair, in its grim rendezvous with death and fear, no cry broke from her lips, no call for aid. She told the secret of her woe to none. Calm was her face, and courage kept her mute, yet only her outward self suffered and strove. Even her humanity was half divine. Her spirit opened 
to the spirit in all. Her nature felt all nature as its own. Apart, living within, all life she bore. Aloof, she carried in herself the world. Her dread was one with the great cosmic dread. Her strength was founded on the cosmic mites. The universal mother's love was hers. Against the evil at life's afflicted roots, her own calamity, its private sign, of her pangs she made a mystic poignant sword. A solitary mind, a worldwide heart, to the lone immortal's unshared work she rose. At first life grieved not in her burdened breast. On the lap of earth's original somnolence, inert, released into forgetfulness, prone it reposed, unconscious on mind's verge. Obtuse and tranquil like the stone and star, in a deep cleft of silence twixt two realms, she lay remote from grief, unsawn by care, nothing recalling of the sorrow here. Then a slow faint remembrance, shadow-like moved, and sighing, she laid her hand upon her bosom and recognized the close and lingering ache, deep, quiet, old, made natural to its place, but knew not why it was there, nor whence it came. The power that kindles mine was still withdrawn. Heavy, unwilling were life's servitors, like workers with no wages of delight. Sullen, the torch of sense refused to burn. The unassisted brain found not its past. Only a vague earth nature held the frame. But now she stirred, her life shared the cosmic load. At the summons of her body's voiceless call, her strong, far-winging spirit travelled back, back to the yoke of ignorance and fate, back to the labour and stress of mortal days, lighting a pathway through strange symbol dreams across the ebbing of the seas of sleep. Her house of nature felt an unseen sway, illumined swiftly were life's darkened rooms, and memory's casements opened on the hours, and the tired feet of thought approached her doors. All came back to her, earth and love and doom, the ancient disputants encircled her like giant figures wrestling in the night. The goddess from the dim inconscient born awoke to struggle and the pang divine, and in the shadow of her flaming heart at the somber center of the dire debate, a guardian of the unconsoled abyss, inheriting the long agony of the globe, a stone still figure of high and godlike pain, stared into space with fixed regardless eyes that saw grief's timeless depths but not life's goal. Afflicted by his harsh divinity, bound to his throne, he waited unappeased the daily 
oblation of her unwept tears. All the fierce question of man's hours relived. The sacrifice of suffering and desire earth offers to the immortal ecstasy began again beneath the eternal hand. Awake she endured the moment's serried march and looked on this green smiling dangerous world and heard the ignorant cry of living things. Amid the trivial sounds, the unchanging scene, her soul arose, confronting time and fate. Immobile in herself, she gathered force. This was the day when Satyavan must die.